This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports. Just wanted to show off some of the new, well, I guess they're not new anymore. They've been around for uh, several years now. The Trick Flow cylinder heads for the Ford FE. Um, the FE is pretty much 99% of the engine workload that I have. And these are the heads that I use for all of my aftermarket cylinder head builds. Just a really nice piece. Uh, great performers. Um, I can get about 540 horsepower from a 390. Uh, not stroked on pump gas with uh, a fairly thumpy hydraulic roller and a dual plane intake. Uh, these cylinder heads on a 465 will make almost 700 horsepower in a, in a bracket race or a road race situation out of the box. Uh, no changes necessary. They have um, pretty small combustion chambers. Uh, if you're if you're used to looking at normal FE stuff, these usually measure in somewhere between 69 and a half and 70 cc's on on the chamber size. So if you're you know if your current engine is set up for an Edelbrock or a BBM head or or something similar then you're gonna gain a little bit of compression ratio with these. Um, if you're used to uh, medium riser stuff or high riser or tunnel port, then obviously there will be a, a huge combustion chamber volume change in comparison to those cylinder heads. But they're all uh, set up for 11 30 seconds valves. Um, the valves are longer than, than normal for an FE. These measure at about five, uh, five and a half inches, 5.500. Normally, I'm sorry, 5.550. Normally, an FE valve is somewhere around 5450. These are about 100 thousandths longer. Uh, they come with a 2190 intake valve and a 1625 exhaust valve. The rocker stand pad has been raised 300 thousandths over a normal head and you can kind of tell by looking at the distance here if you're if you're used to looking at fe heads you can see that it's a, a whole lot taller there what happens is since the rocker stand pads are raised 300 and the valves are 100 thousandths longer then you normally gain about 200 thousandths net in um, in your stand height so that can play a role in your rocker arm geometry some rockers will bolt up and not have any issues um, some need to have the rocker stands cut down and um, i've used these with factory non-adjustables i've used them with my own uh, roller tip non-adjustable rockers. I've used TNDs um, and the majority of the time the stands have to be cut down. Uh, if you're familiar with precision oil pumps, they are now offering some rocker stands uh, that are already cut down. So, you know, those stands will work with, with any pretty much any rocker arm and uh, any shaft. So, uh, you know, you don't have to mess with cutting the rocker arm stands down since he's making those for us. Um, intake port volume is usually somewhere in between 170 and 175 cc's as measured. Um, these have been ported. Um, we're getting into a porting program with these for engines that are a little larger than, you know, the 460, 470 range. And um, we're, we're picking up some, some port volume and we're picking up some flow as well. Out of the box, these will flow about 330 CFM at 600 lift. They tend to back up a little bit when you get past 600. Um, they don't do quite well when approaching 650. But these, since they have been ported um, at 600 lift, they flow 349. So we're picking picking those up 15 CFM roughly at 600 lift, and then they go on up. Um, they don't back up anymore with the porting that we're doing, and these will top out 
at around 300, excuse me, 360 CFM at 750 lift. So just, uh, just a really super nice cylinder head, very modern combustion chambers. Um, I typically run around 28 to 30, maybe 32 on some engines, depending on the compression ratio, degrees, timing. Uh, just a really efficient chamber. Uh, exhaust port, really nice and small. Um, intake port, typical medium riser gasket size, uh, having the nice veins in the floors, and um, just a just a really nice piece. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to show some things that I normally do to these cylinder heads. This one's going on. This pair of cylinder heads is going on a 496. FE that I'm doing for a customer. Um, I use them on engine builds. I also bring them in bare and set them up uh, for someone who calls in and says, hey, I need a, a set of trick flow heads. We can either set, set them up um, bare with valves or we can send them to match your camshaft specs. So the first thing that I usually do is uh, I will tap this feed hole uh, a 12 24 tap is the correct size for the hole and um, I tap those and then just use a little sit screw um, you can use that as a restrictor uh, or completely block it off which I usually do because I oil through the push rods on the majority of my FEs so you can't see it now but um, there's there's a tapped hole and I've already uh, put a set screw down in there. So what I'm going to do next, and I'll probably uh, temporarily end the video for now, but I want to go ahead and put the valves in and start measuring install heights and looking at spring pressures. So uh, give me a few moments and, and we'll continue with the video. Okay, we're a little bit further now. What I've done is that I have uh, went through and measured all the valve spring install heights and um, that's usually you do that with a locator and a retainer and a pair of locks and a spring mic uh, this particular spring mic will not fit over the locator shoulder so that's no problem I just measure it and then subtract the 60 thousandths for for the locator and here's our actual uh, install heights for our valves this should be done with every single pair of cylinder heads that you use, that you touch, that you assemble. Um, this makes sure that everything is to where you want it to be. And you can obviously move your install height up and down uh, if you need to, to adjust spring pressures or uh, coil bind clearance. But uh, I've went through and set everything up and we're pretty much at 1900 uh, give or take ten thousandths or so. Um, we're using a set of comp cams beehive springs. These are 26 120s with some steel uh, retainers, 795s, and then they're steel spring locators and a set of locks. So what I'm going to do now is um, we're going to throw a spring uh, and I've actually already did this, but uh, we're going to throw a spring and a retainer and in the spring tester and check our spring pressures and our coil, coil bind, and we'll we'll make note of those things. All right, so we got our beehive valve spring and the retainer. You should always check your install height with the retainer. Doesn't really matter on a beehive, but on a dual or a triple spring, the retainer can load the spring. Um, just by the steps that are on the retainer itself. So you should always check uh, install heights with the retainer on it. Our install height was 1900. So we're going to crank this down to 1900. Never done it looking through a camera before, but we'll make it work. So we're at 1,900, and we're at 153 pounds seat pressure, which is generally where I like to run uh, my FE hydraulic rollers on seat pressure. And then if we do the subtraction, 
uh, 1900 our cam is 635 lift so that means our open uh, height is going to be 1265 and we're almost at 400 pounds open pressure so uh, adequate spring pressures for for this hydraulic hydraulic roller uh, FEs with my custom cams and correctly specced valve springs and and valve train will easily go to 7,000 RPM. And then one last thing we need to check is coil bind. And we're gonna roll our spring tester down until it binds binds the spring up. We are one one ninety three. So we will uh, make note of that. Basically, we have uh, about 65 thousandths coil bind clearance. So, right where we need to be. Okay, so I went ahead and, and checked all the other springs. It's a good habit to get into to go ahead and check uh, all your valve springs. Uh, the coil bind clearance or actually the coil bind dimension where these things bind up varied by about 30 thousandths between all 16 springs. So it's good to map all those out. And uh, especially on some some racier applications where things kind of get down to the, to the nitty gritty, you want to make sure you know where all your springs are going to bind up. So the last thing I want to do, well not the last thing, but the next thing I want to do is uh, install these valve seals. These are Viton valve seals. And, um, you know, one thing that you see is guys using a hammer and a seal driver to put these on. But if you have the correct seals, they should be pretty easy to, to walk down. And what I do is I just use a socket with an extension and roll through and just push these down. That should be all that it takes. You shouldn't have to hammer or do anything like that. And then we're going to load some valves in. I'm going to grab some assembly lube. Put some on, on the stems. These are the same valves in order that I checked all the install heights. Some guys use oil, some guys use assembly lube. It's totally up to you. I found that this comp cams lube stays on for quite a while, but it doesn't harden. You certainly don't want things to be dry when you start the engine up for the first time. Then one thing, last thing I'm gonna check is we're gonna check our Retainer to valve seal clearance. This is something that needs to be done as well. I've seen some very close combinations. We want to check in between the seal and the retainer with a pair of calipers. We've got 870 thousandths clearance. Came as 635 lift, so we got pr plenty of clearance in between the retainer and the valve seal. So we should be happy there. So I'm going to uh, turn the camera off now and get these heads assembled and um, get the chambers poured and get the intake uh, port CC'd. And um, I'll have one last video with that information. 
Okay, on to the next step. So we've got the uh, cylinder head assembled. We've got a spark plug that we're going to actually use uh, the same style that we're going to use on the engine when it's running. Got our uh, barrette filled with uh, colored alcohol. And we're going to check and see what the volume of this combustion chamber is. These are generally pretty close to advertised. I think they're advertised at 70 cc's. These usually come in for me at around 69 and a half to 70, somewhere around there. But this is also an important step in assembling your cylinder heads. You need to know what your combustion chamber size is so that you can pick the appropriate piston and make sure everything lines up with your compression ratio. See if I can get this little air bubble out here. Got it. All right. Don't know if you can. Eh, let's see here. I'm seeing about 68 and 68.6, 68.8, something like that. So. That's what this chamber measures. A little bit smaller than normal uh, by a cc or so, but that's no big deal. And uh, I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna pour an intake port next. All right, now we're checking port volume. I've already, uh, this is a 100 cc barrette, so I've already filled it once where we've already went to 100 and uh, we're just going the extra whatever it takes to make up the port now. We're at 40, 140 cc's. These have been slightly ported, so I'm curious to see what the intake port volume is gonna be this time. Hundred and sixty. Hundred and seventy. Hundred and seventy nine. Well, actually, I didn't fill it up. Oh, yep, hundred and seventy nine. So these are advertised at one hundred and seventy five CCs. So we're getting 300, almost 360 CFM from a 179 CC port. Pretty stinking good. So we get everything cleaned up. I'll post some pictures of the assembled head and um, hopefully I'll do some, some dyno results with this engine. It's gonna be a 496 cubic inch FE based on a bear block motors block and a scat crank with some K1 rods and some diamond pistons. And one of my custom hydraulic rollers and a Performer RPM intake. So it should be a pretty stout combination. Thanks for watching.